Okay, so we're going to make a Mighty Byte uh, clamp here. So this is one of their T-slot uh, fixturing devices that has uh, what they call a uh, pit bull uh, knife edge little gripper here. So we're going to go ahead and create this to use inside of Esprit. So this is the model as it comes in if you go to their website and sign up and download the step file. So looking at it, you know, again, uh, if you've looked at any of the other videos, some of them, what I'll do is I'll get rid of stuff that I don't need. So for example, these are going to be underneath the table sitting inside of the uh, T-slot. The, uh, so I'm going to get rid of them and you can just click on one and uh, using the highlight mode, depending on the highlight mode you're using, I, I still use the standard or the original way with the left and the right mouse buttons. It gives me more control. Uh, once I've done that, I highlight it, just hit the delete key or right click and hit delete. Um, additionally, looking at these bolts, I don't want all that threaded stuff in there. Um, you know, overall, this one fixture is probably not going to take up a lot of room of memory, but, um, you know, when you add in a bunch of things, depending on how complex your fixture is, I just find it to be best practice to minimize the file size. So here uh, we have some threaded uh, areas underneath, but I do want to keep the thread or the, uh, the cap of the bolt and... Um, basically what I need to do is cut the solid so I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this and you can come to modeling and say split body and because I highlighted it first it's already selected in there and then just pick the bottom edge I think of the uh, cap so it will split it in here and well let's just say okay and when I do OK, you can see now just the threaded portion is highlighted so I could right click and say delete. And I get to still see, you know, in my simulation, it looks nicer having the, uh, you know, the cap there. So I'm just going to do, you know, the same thing for both of these. Go to back to split body. And again, you want to rotate a little bit and be able to see down in there. Grab the bottom, say OK. I'm going to do the same thing here, <clears throat> split body, grab the bottom, and say OK, and then uh, just go to uh, a view that uh, you can well, just hit delete there, and then uh, hit delete here, and we've cleaned up the model. Okay, so uh, I like to kind of make things match what the website looks like when they post photos of their product. So this particular body, I'm gonna select it, and then I'm just gonna come in here and pick a, a darker gray, just so it looks a little nicer, looks a little bit more like the product on the website, the, the photos. So uh, now what we wanna do is orient and place this in the right position. So um, the best thing to do here is I'm going to pick one of these bottom faces. This is going to sit at, you know, interface flush with the top of the machine table. So I'm going to pick one of those faces, you know, both of these. You could pick one of these two. It doesn't matter which one you pick. And then I'm going to come here to align Z. And what we want is we want the Z pointing up. And this is the opposite way. So if you hold your shift key down on the keyboard and hit that again, it'll flip it around. And that's what we want there. Um, another thing that we want to do is, you know, these interface with other products. So um, they make tables that these will bolt into. And these bolt hole patterns, you know, should match where the location is. So it makes it a little bit easier. Um, so what I might want to do here is set the center of this uh, bore, you know, right here, this hole. I want to go ahead and pick one of those solid faces in there, and then I can say align with Z. And you'll see that it'll keep my XY location, but it will put my, uh, the Z axis centered into that bore. Uh, so now... 
I might want to, at this point, rotate this because T-slots on milling tables are usually oriented um, along the x-axis. So, you know, if I'm looking at the table standing in front of the machine, you know, the x is going to go side to side and y is usually, um, you know, forward and back into the machine. You know, not all machines are exactly the same, but most machines that I've... Uh, come across or like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit Control A, or you can you can right click and say select all. Um, and what I want to do is I want to rotate around the Z axis 90 degrees. So I'm just going to say uh, right click copy. I'm going to hit R on my keyboard, or you can pick rotate from the drop down. I'm going to say move. I'm going to say 90 degrees, and actually let's do minus 90. Yeah. So, because for me, just the way my brain works, when I load a part, I'm going to probably mount one of these first on the right side of it. So the part would be here, and then this would interface with it on the right. And if I want to um, kind of have, you know, it depends on how you build your uh, machine environment in a spree. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a work holding and a fixturing location on this guy that I can use if I ever wanted to. This would probably be added to a different fixture or something like that so that when you move the main fixture, the base fixture, all of these Mighty Byte uh, pit bulls would move with that. But, you know, who knows? You know, one of these days you might want to do something different. So it's always good practice to put an extra, you know, couple of uh, UVW locations there. So what I'm going to do now is just say, well, let's pick translate. And I'm going to pick maybe the, uh, actually, you know what, let's do, let's do where it would be flush with the table. So let's go to segment two under geometry. I'll just do a quick segment right here. And then now I'm going to do the translate. So uh, actually, I never showed this. You have, a, you have a quick access menu bar here, and I've added the translate to here. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, this icon, you can, you can put these icons right-clicking and just add to quick access toolbar. So if you want any icon, move origin, you right-click on it and add to the quick access toolbar, and it will be added up here. So you don't have to switch these menus. So I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to pick this center point, and then here uh, I'm just going to say, you know what, give me a fixture adapter position, FA underscore 1, and then a WA for my workpiece, for a workpiece uh, position underscore 1. And at this point, um, you know, this guy is pretty much ready to go unless I wanted to, you know, create a couple more of these uh, workpiece adapter positions. But, you know, you could always move things around, and traditionally speaking, this is usually going to be, in my head, I'm thinking, I'm going to use this with other base fixtures, so I probably don't need another one. So here you just go to File, say Save As, and then we're going to pick GDML for Fixture, Fixture File, and come to your uh, Mighty Byte... Uh, uh, HDT slot base is where I, I stored mine, and I'm just going to go ahead and say save. Okay, so let's load the machine. We're going to grab a Haas. These are pretty common machines, so we're going to look at the table here, zoom in a little bit, and on the Haas itself, I'll load a fixture, and I'll just load in the Mighty Byte. So here you can see the preview, in the, so I see that, yeah, that's the guy that I just made. I'm going to say open. It appears on the table for me, and you'll see that it's sitting nice and snug inside of that T slot. So at this point, you know, you can, you know, move this stuff around. Um, actually, let's, why don't we do an OK here? So we have that. And what I'm going to do is add another uh, clamp, I guess, to this one. And what I can do is just highlight the first T-slot base that I loaded in, 
come over to fixture, I'm going to pick this same guy again. Now you'll see that it's automatically offset to the one that I did, but that's okay. So I'm going to translate it up, let's say four inches. And now, um, well actually, what I probably want to do is translate this up maybe two inches in, in that. And then what I can do is grab this face and let me turn the machine off so that we don't have all this stuff in the way. So I'm going to grab this face and I'll say basically marry those together using this function right here. This is called alignment mating. So you can mate uh, two solids in or two simulation solids together uh, in the in the uh, uh, simulation window by using these functions. So I'm going to bring this back down to zero, and you'll see that if you know if I want, I can basically tie one to another. So now if I go into this one, and you know if I move this let's say up in two, and I want to do the same thing, I want to move this down one T-slot. Uh, you know, if you already know what the distance is between these, that's great. But uh, I could grab this face and maybe, you know, let's say this one. Oh, I didn't hold control for both. So there we go. Grab that, set this back to zero, and boom, they're moved over to the other T-slot. So I can uh, you know, build stuff and have them reference either other fixtures or have a row of these that are all sitting there, um, you know, tied to the, the first one. And you'll see that in the list. So as I add uh, more of these to this one, it's going to, you know, populate along this tree so that when I do move this one, so now when I move this one wherever I want, um, let's move it let's say two inches in X, you know, I can move it wherever the heck I want. So that is how you build a Mighty Byte. And at this point now, we can use it to make our simulations look really nice.